other part of my question deals with what, what I deal with as a stage designer. Right. Because I really believe that the kind of space I design in relation to the rhythms of the characters, their speech patterns, etc. If I don't get the space right, the actors don't have a chance. So you've given them words to say in a particular rhythm, mm -hmm. and probably in your mind you may have imagined a space in which they are saying those words as they walk, travel, whatever. So I, my, I'm always interested in seeing plays where the play is destroyed because the actors are spanning 60 feet at the right. Bloom of Hell Theater when they really <laughs> are, they should be yeah, no. In any event, uh, I'm wondering, am I right in assuming that as you are writing, you are seeing your characters in some kind of world, some kind of space, even moments thereof? I teach that a lot, I, and I, do, I have exercises I do specifically with the writers about what is the space you're setting it in, why is it there, and what is the physical reality of being there? I mean, is it a hot, is it cold, is it a pleasant place, is it an unpleasant place? These are things that are all going to feed your characters and make them make specific decisions. And the way I write, I know a, a lot of the writers I deal with say they tend to hear voices, they tend to hear what's going on. I, I'm a very visual guy, and, and when I am writing something, it's there in my head, and I'm seeing it in three dimensions all around me. We do this whole uh, exercise about building environments in your mind of where you are and describing the room to me and that kind of thing, which I, which I do with actors as well. Because it makes it more specific, and you don't necessarily have to put all of that stuff on the page, because then a designer is going to take it, and if you've done your job well, it will trigger in them ideas that will hopefully take it up another step. But one of the biggest revelations for me was um, the last 15 years I've been affiliated with the Royal Exchange Theatre in Manchester, England. That's a huge, beautiful theatre, but it's in the round. And in the round really fucks me up, because I'm a proscenium kind of guy, I'm a screen kind of guy, and I, I found out I had to start thinking in much more three dimensions and from either side, and working in that situation, and not being able to hide things, because when you're working in the round, you can't hide anything. Um, in the end, it was really freeing because we, you, you end up letting go of shit like doors and windows and where you're coming in and what's the furniture and all of that kind of thing. And you concentrate on how to make the most concentrated environment for the play in that moment and then get rid of it and bring another one in. And I, I was very fortunate in working with Brian Murray, who you know, had worked in that theater for 25 years beforehand. So he was able to take me out of my kind of proscenium style writing into something that was much more imaginative. And in the end, I think. Um, because you are so close, and because my philosophy is the less we do, the more the audience interacts. That we don't have to have every prop and every tree and everything you describe on the stage built. We actually don't need any of that stuff. What we need is for the audience to create it themselves. And that comes from the writing, from the design, from the lighting. And, and I'm at a point in my career, and have been for a while, when I sit down to write a play, I'm not writing a play just to challenge myself and the actors and the director. I also want to challenge the director, uh, the, the designer. I want to challenge the sound designer. I want to challenge the stage management team. I mean, I want everybody to never be complacent in what they're doing. And, and in England, you know, they're quite sort of, uh, I'm the stage manager, I sit here and I drink tea and I do this and I do that. And also they're going, we have like 15 costume changes, 400 lighting cues, we've never done this kind of shit before. So it kind of was a, a trade-off in the end from what I learned from them and what they learned from me. It was very free. Um, I, I started off my first professional writing. I was I was hired as a to, to write for radio before I knew I was a writer. And um, one of the first things that they taught me that they really tried to impress upon me was that radio was actually a visual medium, in the sense that for the writer, I was I needed to be able to create those that those kinds of images that could that could really sit with people as they heard it on the radio. And that really sat with me as, as kind of my role, and it, it suits my style as well. Um, just to speak to that, I do, I, uh, sometimes there's very specific uh, imagery that I have regarding my pieces, and I, and I throw them in. I throw them in the stage directions, even if I think they're possible, just because I think it'll spark something in the director or in the designer. For example, there's a stage direction that's like, that my, my good friend, who's a, who's a designer, says it's her favorite stage direction of all time. And I, uh, in, in my first play, it says, 
in it's set in a in a kind of in a, in a shop. It says a tantrum of fabric flies across the stage. And she goes, I don't know what the fuck that means. Excuse me. <laughs> but and she said, but she loves it because it describes the emotional moment of, of, of the protagonist and what's happening. And so, you know, for me, that's that's what I can offer in that way. It's like, I don't actually know what happens there, but but emotionally, that's what I want. To, what I'm imagining. And so that's what I can offer to the creative team to how they interpret. Yeah, I'm always amazed by that sort of thing and the way people will be so literal. I mean, I, when I'm reading plays that people have written, he, he, you know, he moves up stage center and exits stage left. I think, why are you doing this? <laughs> you don't need to do this. All you have to say they exit. The director will figure it out. The director will figure it out. Lots of people will figure yeah. it out. You've been reading too much Samuel French. You don't no, really not. need to do this. I have to admit, because I'm also an actor, there are certain things that I don't put into play. Because I just can't stand like actor. This character's covered in mud and sweat, and for like two hours, and I'm like, that actor is good. What are you doing? Like, there's a part of me that well, does that's that. why I do it. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. I remember that scene. That I know. I remember that. Scene. <laughs> that, I know. Please, other than that heartbeat. But no, like there's certain things that I just think, and I'm trying to think of a good example, like a real example. But because uh, I, what I just said to you was just ridiculous. But um. Because actors don't care about having mud on them, but I think that there's certain things that um, you do try to be aware of. Because there's certain things that you know your average actor would say, "Well, I like things that are dangerous." You know, it's like the Spider-Man play. You know, it's like whoever wrote that. It's like, okay, you're going to have me swinging what, where, and how? Can you prove to me that it's safe? And what's going on? Because and somebody got hurt doing that show. Several people got hurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and they were all so, professional stunt people. They weren't actually yeah. actors. Oh, one actor fell off the stage, but I don't yeah. think that was actually their fault. So I, I would say, I mean, it's great. Uh, Spider-Man is a perfect example. Your creativity is great, it's fantastic, but keep in mind, you can't kill an actor. Just keep that in mind. But you're all right to try. <laughs> you're all right to try. Because we all want to on occasion. Because, you know, we, we do have ways of doing things in the theater that are not reality, and it should always be safe. But I'm actually the exact opposite of mine. I want to push the actor as far as I possibly can, emotionally, physically, oh, on, on every level. Like, no, no one should be in danger. But you know what? Taking your pants down on stage can be a lot more dangerous yeah. than jumping off a 20-foot cliff. Mm -hmm. Exposing your heart on stage is a lot more dangerous than doing a sword fight. You can't, I mean, I, I'm not really interested in actors who are afraid of things or who are average actors. I'm really interested in the actors who have the balls and have the ability to dig into themselves and to take real risks. And sometimes giving them physical risks to do that are safe, you've worked out a way to do it, helps give them and push them to those right. em emotional places you want them to go. I don't think actors should be comfortable all the time, particularly on stage. And I just don't, don't want to necessarily. Actors do love to be challenged. They do. Well, some actors. Some like actors. Yeah, and it's not some all actors like right. to be challenged. And all actors will whine about it until they finally do it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. How far is it down?